the red light.
I know the time is 531. We're actually waiting on another commissioner who had uh, foot surgery, um, primarily because the parking deck is not in service. So we had to scatter to find parking spots. So if you can give us maybe another two or three minutes, if that's okay. Okay, well, thank you. Good afternoon. Welcome to the Durham Planning Commission. The members of the Durham Planning Commission have been appointed by the City Council and County Board of Commissioners as an advisory board to the elected officials. You should know that the elected officials have a final say so on any issues brought before us tonight. If you wish to speak on an agenda item, please go to the table to my left and sign up to speak. For those wishing to speak, please state your name and your address clearly when you come to the podium. Speak clearly into the microphone. Each side, those wishing to speak in favor of an item and those wishing to speak in opposition to an item, will have 10 minutes to present each, each side. The time will be divided amongst all persons wishing to speak. If you're here opposing a rezoning tonight, you should be aware of what's called a protest petition. A protest petition can be helpful to those residents who live in a rezoning area. Please consult the planning department staff for any details on a protest petition, and they will be happy to help you. You should also keep in constant touch with the planning department as to when your case will go before the elected officials for a final vote. Finally, all motions are stated in the affirmative, so if the motion fails or ties, the recommendation is for denial. Thank you. Can we have roll call? Commissioner Beachwood? Present. Commissioner Beelan? Commissioner Board? Commissioner Davis? Present. Commissioner Gibbs? Present. Vice Chair Harris? Present. Chair Jones? Present. Commissioner Kimball? Present. Commissioner Lamb? Commissioner Padgett? Commissioner Smudsky? Present. Commissioner Whitley? Present. Commissioner Winders? Present. We move down to adjustments to the minutes. 
Good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the Commission. Pat Young with the Planning Department. Uh, no adjustments to the agenda tonight, but I will certify for the record that all public hearing items before you tonight have been advertised in accordance with the provisions of law, and we have affidavits to that effect on file with the Planning Department. Thank you. We have approval of the minutes. So moved. Second. All right. We're moving properly. Second. All those in favor, let it be known by raising your right hand. The motion carries 12 to 0. All right. Thank you. We're going to open the public hearing, plan amendments. Hendrick, South Point, plan amendment case A120014 and zoning case Z120015. Good afternoon. I'm Hannah Jacobson with the Durham Planning Department, and I'll be presenting the plan amendment case for Hendrick, South Point. The applicant is Durham Investment LLC and they are proposing to amend approximately 12.87 acres of the future land use map from low medium density residential to commercial. The proposal affects two properties located in the suburban tier on the west side of Fayetteville Road, south of Renaissance Parkway, and north of Massey Chapel Road. The site for the plan amendment is, represents only a portion of the larger site area that is the subject of the zoning case, which you'll hear about next. Many of you are probably familiar with the broader area. Interstate 40 and the streets at South Point are located to the north of the site. Um, just north and west of the site is also the residential neighborhood called Kennington Heights. This area has been the subject of a number of different planning initiatives in recent decades, um, the earliest of which was the 1993 Triangle Township Plan. This was a small area plan that recommended that the neighborhood remain low density residential. But by 2002, a lot had changed in the area, specifically the streets of South Point had been built and improvements had been made to the interchanges off of I-40. Um, so there was a lot of development pressure in the area, and to address some of those issues, there was an NC-54 I-40 corridor study that was completed in 2002. It recommended that the Kennington Heights neighborhood be, um, become a commercial node with slightly higher residential densities surrounding it. Um, it also recommended that Kennington Heights should develop, should redevelop according to kind of a, um, according to kind of single ownership or as a single project. Um, the 2005 comprehensive plan largely adopted those recommendations, um, but then in 2009, the Joint City County Planning Committee um, requested that the planning department uh, change the policy um, to, to the special redevelopment areas, and that policy kind of modified it so that there no longer needed to be a single project, single ownership for redevelopment, but instead that subsequent phases of development be able to develop to similar standards. In their justification statement, the applicant suggests that conditions have changed even since 2009. Specifically, they point to the Jordan Lake rules, which would restrict um, some piping of the on-site stream. Um, that, in effect, limits the amount of developable area and makes the parcel nearly infeasible to develop as a low-medium density um, residential project. So instead, the applicants are requesting that the site be amended to commercial so that it can be integrated with the, uh, the rest of the site of the rezoning. And staff has um, reviewed that request according to these four criteria that are found in the Unified Development Ordinance. We find that the proposed amendment is consistent with land use policies and the comprehensive plan for uh, commercial development in the suburban tier including its location and its ability to be integrated with the rest of the commercial node. We also find that the proposal is compatible with uh, surrounding future land use patterns. The plan amendment um, proposal represents a southern expansion of that commercial node. However, the uh, committed buffers as, as part of the development plan um, offer kind of a, an adequate transition to areas south. 
We determined there not to be any substantial adverse impacts, though we do have some concern over the impact to the historic Massey Chapel, which was Durham County's first historic landmark. But finally, the site is of adequate shape and size to accommodate the proposed use. It meets all four criteria for plan amendments, and so staff is recommending approval. Good evening, Amy Wolf with the Planning Department presenting the accompanying zoning map change case for this item. Um, get to the beginning. This case Z1200025 Hendrick South Point uh, again is a zoning map change request. Um, the applicant is actually the city of Durham uh, acting through the agent Gary Wallace. This due to the fact that there is a pending annexation for this site. Um, it's presently in the county's jurisdiction and has been uh, reviewed under uh, both ordinances. Uh, but again, it's a pending annexation. Uh, therefore, the city of Durham is the applicant. And uh, all the, the land use decisions will be made through uh, one item at council. The request is from the current designation of residential rural to a commercial general with a development plan. The, the site acreage is 33.373 acres, which is larger than the plan amendment site, um, and the proposed use is for 180,000 square feet of commercial development. The site is along Fayetteville Road, just south of the South Point Mall, as indicated. Um, it's a total of 36 parcels. And uh, there is a right of way running through the center of the parcel, Kennington Drive. There's, and I will expand on this in a moment, uh, but also Chaparral Drive on the northern boundary with Roland Rolando Drive uh, running into the north part of it. The proposal does satisfy the zoning standards for the commercial general district as uh, demonstrated on the development plan. The summary is here on the slides by meeting the setbacks um, and the minimum site area. Uh, here is the existing condition shown on the development plan for the site. Um, it generally uh, ends towards the bottom of the screen uh, and the northern boundary is Chaparral Drive. Kennington Drive runs through the site here. There is a number of en uh, environmental features. There's a perennial stream, which is also a portion of, of that stream is an intermittent stream. There are some steep slopes, which you can see with the darker area of the stream. Um, there, uh, the sum of the site is, cl is clear of trees. There are a few structures on the site, and um, a, much of it is forested. The proposed development plan is shown here. There's a number of commitments, what, uh, which I'll describe in a moment. Uh, you can see the area around the stream has shown the appropriate 100-foot buffer. Um, this property is within the FJB watershed protection overlay. Uh, it also um, reflects some road improvements, site access points. There's four of them, two uh, coming on to Kennington Drive here on the west, one uh, to the north off of um, currently Chaparral Drive on Rolando Drive, as well as onto Fayetteville Street. And there's a number of uh, tra uh, traffic mitigation commitments, which I'll summarize. The proposal is for a maximum of 180,000 square feet of non-residential area. Again, there's four ex external access points. They are committed. The impervious surface maximum is 70%, which is the maximum allowable in the FJB watershed protection overlay. And the tree coverage um, committed is 14.1%, which is greater than what the ordinance requires, uh, 10%. The commitment shown graphically, uh, the entire development plan is, is a commitment. Uh, there's the access, external access points, internal access points. There's a continuation of Rolando Drive uh, is a commitment for that to be a 60-foot right-of-way. Kennington Drive improvements, and, and all of this is detailed in the staff report. Um, right away dedication on Fayetteville Road, there's a sanitary sewer easement shown, and the location of tree coverage areas. There's a number of text commitments, including the 
the applicant will request closure of Chaparral Drive, which was the northern boundary of the project, uh, street lighting, transit facilities, uh, widening of the roads and other traffic improvements with uh, turn lanes. Um, Kennington Drive, there's a number of turn lanes uh, committed, as well as improvements at Rolando Drive and Renaissance Parkway, just a bit off-site, as well as Fayetteville Road and Massey Chapel Road, uh, a, a westbound turn lane there. There are design commitments associated with this request. Uh, the buildings will be one and a half or two stories, and this is just a summary. Um, uh, they will be fronting along the main road or drive that runs through the site with the main entrance along the, the main road facing the, the road running through the site. Uh, if there's going to be additional entrances, they can have up to two additional entrances, but they must be used for loading vehicles onto a showroom floor aluminum overhead doors and there's a, a committed roof line and materials for the main buildings. The accessory buildings also have a committed roof line and also materials and there's uh, more details for that on the development plan and in the staff report. The request uh, is not consistent with the comprehensive plan, more specifically the future land use map. Uh, the majority of the site is shown as commercial, but the plan amendment is, is for the southern portion of the site from low medium density to commercial. But we looked at a number of comprehensive plan policies, uh, which this request satisfies those. Um, this currently should say no uh, because of the plan amendment. Uh, staff determines that this request, if the plan amendment is approved, is consistent with the comprehensive plan and other policies and ordinances. All right. Thank you. We have 12 people signed up to speak. Did everyone sign up who wanted to speak? Yes? Okay. So we have 12 people signed up for and one against. So you have an option to eat. All 12 of you could speak, or you can designate a spokesperson, um, but the time is still going to be allotted 10 minutes per, unless we want an extension if you want to speak individually. So if you're signed up for, um, you can kind of just get in line and, and go in order as you lined up. We can do it that way. Or you can designate a spokesperson. Uh, we have several speakers. Uh, I'll, I'll start off, and then we'll use our 10 minutes. Okay, so 10 minutes will work? Yes. Okay, good enough. Mr. Chairman and members of the Planning Commission, my name is Lewis Cheek. I represent the developers of Hendrick South Point. We're here seeking a plan amendment for 12.87 acres and a rezoning of 33.373 acres of property in the Kennington Heights area. We ask that you recommend uh, amendment of the comprehensive plan to change the designation of the 12.87 acres from low medium density residential to commercial. There are a number of reasons to look upon this request favorably. The commercial designation is in character with the way surrounding property has developed and is developing. Kennington Heights has been indicated as a future commercial node since 2002 and this is a natural extension of the node to additional frontage on Fayetteville Road. The requirements for stream buffering, stormwater management, and road widening make this parcel economically infeasible for low-medium residential development. Stream buffering creates two oddly shaped building areas which physically restrict low-medium density residential development. There's no water and sewer to the property. The stream buffers provide a natural boundary between this uh, proposed commercial area and the residential which is to the south. The amendment is consistent with comprehensive plan policies and with future land use patterns. There's sufficient infrastructure for development of this property as commercial. Designating this property as commercial will not adversely impact necessary dwelling units in the city of Durham. The site is of adequate shape and size to accommodate the use. The planning department has thoroughly reviewed the request and recommends approval of the plan amendment. We also request that you recommend rezoning of the entire 33.373 acre tract from residential rural to commercial general with the development plan. We are bringing you precisely what was envisioned for Kennington Heights in the 2005 comprehensive plan, a development through single ownership or as a single project 
employing unifying design elements, roadways, and buffers. Cannington Heights was recognized as a neighborhood in transition and was designated as a special redevelopment area. This recognized that the character of the area had experienced a substantial change over time and that a commercial use had become the appropriate use. This uh, morphed from agriculture and very low residential to suburban scale subdivisions surrounding a regional mall. Kennington Heights was designated commercial, but without water and sewer was left to wait for the developer to come along who had the vision and economic ability to bring folks what they wanted. Opportunities like this don't happen very often. The Hendrick folks want to bring an auto mall to the property. They uh, propose to bring their entire operation out of downtown Durham as well as operations they have in Chapel Hill, a total of 10 franchises to the site. This is not strip development. This is an orderly configuration of automobile dealerships on their own campus. Hendrick believes that this is a prime location a much better location than the one that was attempted out on 751 uh, and that it will fit their needs perfectly. As a matter of fact, without this much property, they cannot do this deal. Staff has studied the request. They have concluded that with the plan amendment, the request would be consistent with a comprehensive plan and applicable policies and ordinances. This is the opportunity for Kennington Heights to get the commercial user it has sought and fought for over all of these years. It's an opportunity for Durham to realize a substantial increase in tax base, in sales, in property taxes, and to see beneficial use made of property which has sat mostly vacant for many years. Please hear the folks from Kennington Heights and vote in favor of the rezoning. I would ask that everyone from Kennington Heights who requests this change to commercial to stand, please. Thank you. We have our entire team here to answer questions at the end of the presentation. My name, my name is Dorothy Kroom. Well, good evening. My name is Dorothy Kroom. I live at 10 Blanche Spring Place. It's great to have the Hendricks South Point dealership coming into Southern Durham. I, I have met uh, Rick Hendrick on several occasions. My husband worked for Rick Hendrick back in the 90s. He's a great person, and he really look out for the community that they come to. And I just want to say I'm glad to have them part of our community. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Jeanette Wilson and my address is 222 Kennington Road. I'm here this evening for myself and for my neighbors who reside in Kennington Heights and in support of the development plan that's before you. At its peak, Kennington Heights consisted of approximately 32 homes. However, today, only about 15 of those homes are occupied. The rest of them are vacant, abandoned, and deserted, which has led to increased crime in our neighborhood and a source of blight and decay, and not only in southern Durham, but for the city and county of Durham as a whole. Kentington Heights as a residential community no longer fits with the rapid growth of development, of commercial development, there on the corner of Fedville Road and Renaissance Parkway. Because of the soil, there has been a long history of well and septic problems. Many homeowners have had to bear the cost of expensive well repair and rebuild. There are properties with multiple wells on them. Some property owners have resorted to using water holding tanks just to have an adequate water supply. We have had a neighbor who's had to have his septic tank cleaned on a weekly basis, and this has caused a severe and financial hardship on him and his family. There are times when the water will appear discolored, undrinkable, and unusable for food preparation. We must buy drinking and cooking water. There are also vacant homeowners who have had their property for 30 or 40 years who are unable to sell or develop their property because the land simply will not perk. We have residents, senior citizens, who have never been able to wash a load of clothing in their own home. They have to take their clothes to a laundromat on a weekly basis. We have disabled disabled homeowners also who must do the same thing. We have homeowners who are paying mortgages on their homes in Kennington Heights but are renting houses elsewhere just to have access to an adequate source of water. 
We have residents who have become ill and have been unable to be discharged back to their own homes because of the situations that we live with on a daily basis. This is no longer an issue of property value and who wants what for their property. We are in a critical and a desperate situation and we need your help. In 2002, the city of Durham was developing a comprehensive long-range plan, and at that time, my neighbors and I stood right here and petitioned the city council to have the land known as Kennington Heights to receive that designation for commercial development in the future, and we were granted that. Commissioners, this is a win-win for everyone involved. This is an opportunity to continue what was started in 2002. It is an opportunity to rid Southern Durham of a rundown, dilapidated 40-year-old community. It is also an opportunity for the residents of Kennington Heights to move on to standard and suitable housing. As I stated earlier, commercial development fits on the corner of Fedville Road and Renaissance Parkway. Kennington Heights does not, and we need your help to move on. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Reverend Rachel Green. I live at 1007 Alma Street, but I have property at, uh, on Kennington Drive. And we have been going through so much, and there have been so many of the residents that have um, become deceased, waiting for this property to be commercialized so that we can move forward. And everything come to fruition. I'm glad that we are at the point that we are. I've, um, I've just been so elated uh, because we have come this close to fruition and I'm a senior citizen myself and I speak on behalf of some of the others that did not want to say anything. They yielded their time to me and so I say that since we have gotten so close to fruition to uh, get this property uh, disposed of and to uh, make a way for progress, I think we should move on and just allow the Lord to show us that this is our time. And I'm yielding over to any of the others that may want to speak on behalf of standing for the right and standing against the wrong. Do we have anyone else wishing to speak in favor of? Okay. So we have one person wishing to speak in opposition. Is that per okay. Sir, sir, you would have the same allotted time of 10 minutes. Good evening. My name, my name is David Brooks. I live. Uh, in uh, Chelsea Meadows, which is just south of the area that's, that's proposed being um, rezoned and uh, the uh, future land use plan changed. When I purchased my home in uh, 2007, I looked at the uh, future land use plan and saw that there is a step down, a natural step down from the commercialism of the mall and the areas uh, north of Renaissance and actually some of Renaissance itself. You see, if you go from um, Felfel Road over to 751, there's no heavy commercial, it's all residential. Even though they're you know, high residential, it's all residential on the south side of Renaissance. Uh, across from uh, this proposed uh, auto complex, there's also, there's also a, uh, a uh, high residential area as well. Uh, my concern is that we're changing. Uh, I made my plans on my future, on my property, um, based on a future land use plan that had this as, as a step down area, uh, transitioning out of the commercial into the urban and, uh, and suburban areas. And now I can't trust that anymore if we go in and start changing it. I think that this will only be the initial piece um, quite logically across the road from here will be the next and it will uh, most certainly creep down uh, Fayetteville Road and uh, into my backyard and I, I sincerely hope that you guys will consider a lifelong citizens request that 
you honor or put some teeth in your plans. Back your plans up, your future land news plans. I sympathize with the pe people in Kingston Heights. I don't see any problem with putting in, you know, residential apartment complexes and things of that nature that actually take down the notch of the, the commercial area. But you've got a lot of people living south of here that will be impacted by this, this uh, heavier commercial. There's also, you know, it was reference brought up to the to the auto mall area over off of 751 that hasn't been developed, uh, fully developed. There's plenty, it looked like a lot of source land over there that could be used for this, this same kind of thing. Um, I, I know there was a lot of conversation and um, uh, when that was rezoned as, uh, to support auto, uh, the auto mall over there and uh, it's pretty much sat vacant other than two places. Thank you. All right, thank you, sir. Do we have anyone else wishing to speak on this matter? Yes, sir. You can come to the mic and uh, get, state your name and address. Are you speaking for or against, sir? Uh, I'm speaking for. For. I think they had uh, 51 seconds left. Can you do it in 51 seconds? Okay. Um, my name is Steve Foreman. I live at 5513 Pelham Road, but I own a property that fronts on Fayetteville Road and James Ross Drive directly across from this property. And I just want to say that I think the people of Kennington Heights deserve this annexation and, and, and rezoning to commercial because they've been held back, they've been denied uh, what is available to other people further south from them, and that is water and sewer. The people Ellison Heights are being denied water and sewer for too long. They've been, uh, normal neighborhoods would have been annexed and given water and sewer, and they've been denied all these long de decades and it's just not fair to hold them in this jeopardy and, and continue this almost eminent domain situation that has been created by the city and county holding again hostage the people of Kennington and Ellison Heights so I support this and I wish the people of Kennington Heights well thank you all right thank you sir. If we don't have anyone else wishing to speak, I'll close the public hearing and bring it back before the commissioners for any additional comments or questions. Do we have anyone wishing to speak? Mr. Kimball. Ms. Cheek, please. When I look at this uh, topology and being that we have a lack of an actual development plan as far as structures. Where do you propose, or what is the proposed building site in this? Is it north of the stream? Uh, yes, let me have my engineer speak to that. Hi, my name's Greg Hartley. I'm with emh and 301 Nicola Drive, Suite 109, Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, as far as building locations, there will be multiple building locations. Um, would be approximately four primary locations here for the main buildings. Um, two located north of Kennington Drive, two to the south. The current is the current layout. North of Kennington Drive and two on the south side. When I look at the um, intermittent stream buffer, yes, and um, and I look towards the Fairfield Road side on the southern side. Yes, there will be no buildings located south of that. That area is basically going to be utilized for stormwater treatment and parking area um, from, from where the buffer extends towards Fayetteville Road to the south. Okay, and right now I'm looking at um, not much tree coverage, but are we thinking about buffering some of that? Yeah, there, there's a, a 50 foot buffer along the residential side in that area, yes. So through natural uh, intermittent stream and, and environmental, current environmental rules, there'll be a natural buffer between that and the neighborhood that's on Massey Chapel Road? Is that correct? That is correct. So therefore, we don't have to worry about encroachment in that area of a commercial 
that that is correct that that area except for a if you look at the buffer there's one area where we connect a sanitary line through it's kind of a break in the shaded area yeah the remainder of that area will remain heavily wooded as it is now okay so therefore if we're looking at anybody wow if we're looking at anybody in the um south of massey chapel road in that development area they really won't see a car dealership will they no sir they okay won't. The other question I have is because the comment was made, uh, Mr. Cheek, that we're going to move all of the Hendrix Auto Mall Park to that location, to that area. The, the downtown operation will move. What's going to happen to the downtown area? Because then we have an open, vacant area in our downtown. Uh, well, we'll look for a purchaser for it, but okay. but we we intend to move the the entire operation and uh, operations out of Chapel Hill into that auto mall. There'll be ten the total of ten franchises there. Okay, thank you, uh, Commissioner Smusky. Thank you, Chairman Jones. Um, while while you're there, uh, there was mention of. Uh, in the report that there would be uh, that there might be some adverse impacts on the part of the neighborhood that you're not going to be touching but there would be some kind of mitigation to those impacts can you tell us about that well I, I think we're talking again about the buffering uh, if I understand you correctly mr. Smutsky I think that would be on the west side because that's that's the part of the neighborhood that's going to be left on the um, yeah, across Matterhorn and moving west okay my name is Stacy Woodhouse uh, from um, I'm work for the developer um, we, I work at a uh, 550 Long Point Road in uh, Mount Pleasant South Carolina um, the plan is is we are going to be shortly uh, coming back with a phase two that's going to cover the western portion of the neighborhood and we plan on purchasing both portions of the neighborhood. So there will, there will effectively, our plan is to have nobody left. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, all right, thank you about that. Um, there, there was a mention of a bike lane down Fadville. Uh, how far, you're gonna build that uh, through the, you know, from, I guess, Renaissance Parkway down pat down to your the end of your property. It's going to right. be a bike lane. It, it goes to, I believe it goes to the south end. Is that correct, Ryan? It's the south end of our property. Yes. Have you considered any other kind of? Uh, I, I'm with Durham Open Space and Trails Commission, and I'm, I'm not sure about the about the whole commission, but. Would it be possible in the, to use some of this buffer for additional trails if there was uh, a way to get access to it? Um, in general, uh, I don't think uh, a bike trail, a Not dealership's bike. a fairly secure environment. I, I don't know that we'd want a bike trail through the... The bike trail's gonna be on Fayetteville. Well, I'm, th I'm sorry I wasn't clear. Yeah. I, was, I was thinking hiking and, and other open space facilities. Uh, you know, hiking mainly, walking through there. And where, where, where would you envision this being? Um, near the stream. A lot of our, a lot of our trails are along streams. Is that something you can consider for the future? Yeah. It's fairly steep there, isn't it? Yeah. The the, the stream buffer area is fairly steep. The stream, uh, the stream okay. buffer area is fairly steep. I'm not sure it'd be conducive to that, um, but I. Uh, okay, as long as you've considered it. Sure. Thank you. Sure. Commissioner Board. Hey there. I, got, um, I find that I'm a big mind about this. First of all, um, I agree. The Kentington Heights neighborhood has waited far too long to have somebody come in and work with this land. Um, I wish it were something other than a car dealership, <laughs> um, but I do appreciate that it looks like it's going to be fairly well buffered to the south. Um, was there no possibility of doing like a mixed use commercial and vertically integrated residential in this area? Uh, not, not from our point of view. Um, the, the use that 
Mr. Hendrick proposes is the use that's most conducive for what he does, and and uh, so we've we've always looked at it from the point of view of uh, an auto, auto mall. Is that you get? Yeah, uh, Commissioner Beachwood. Um, perhaps um, staff could point out to me on the map where where the church is south of this project, please. Massey Chapel. Hannah Jacobson, Durham Planning Department. Um, the church owns these two parcels immediately south of here. The church okay. itself is located on the southern parcel. Um, this parcel, I believe, is vacant. Okay, thank you. Um, we have a memorandum from the Open Space and Trails Commission that um, is, is concerned about these two properties because they are historic properties and asks that there be uh, additional buffering and some additional, um, um, some additional buffering and some additional tree safe to protect these areas. Um, are you familiar with the um, request that they made? I'm the sorry. Open, are you familiar, are, is your development team familiar with the Open Space and Trails Commission's um, recommendation regarding this? Uh, I'm not sure. I, I don't think we are. All right. Well, they've set, they've sent it along to the city council, so you probably will be coming up against it there. They, um, they mentioned here that the areas will be impacted from the creation of this project, and they would request uh, that the property in the surround uh, that um, area to the south of Kennington Drive, directly adjacent to the church property and surrounding the stream buffer will remain as a permanent open space. They want to know if that's going to remain permanent open space or tree coverage, or if the stream and its buffer will remain intact. So the area to the south of that stream buffer to the property line that, it, that it abuts the um, church property, will that remain intact? It's, you mentioned a little earlier that you intended to make it um, there would be some parking in there. The, the, the buffering as a result of the stream, mm -hmm. uh, it, that's a 100-foot buffer mm -hmm. on each side, mm -hmm. which is a committed element of the yes, development plan. Yes, it is. Plan. I think what they've, what they've asked for in addition to this, because I think they've had access to look at this also, is what is the intent for that wedge of space between the buffer and, and the property line? Uh, my understanding side. is that the intention is to use it for stormwater and for parking. And what do you mean by stormwater? The Once again, Greg Hartley with the MH and T. Um, the intent would be for stormwater treatment to meet um, the ordinance detention and water quality requirements. It would be either a, a, a pond or a stormwater wetland. And that'll be a permanent feature there. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Harris. Um, thank you, Chair. Just one comment. I've talked to a number of residents of Kennington Heights and also other neighbors in s surrounding this property and uh, everything I've heard, they're in favor of this and I plan to vote for it and I'll ask you to do likewise. Do we have any other commissioners? Mr. Gibbs? Thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> this is a difficult case, I think. Uh, I really feel for the residents who have had the problems with water and sewer for all of these years. Uh, and I think it's something that, and this is not the only neighborhood that has this problem in this part of the county. And I think it should be addressed some way. Now, this particular proposed project, to me, I think I've heard a comment a while ago that it was, uh, I wish it was something other than a car dealership. 
I have nothing against car dealerships because I love to go to them. But this area, to me, has, in our comprehensive plan, is it, it should be, uh, a, as, it, as we have been referring to it, a step down area. Uh, I would really like to see more, I'll say, diverse development in this area from, uh, from the mall down uh, Fayetteville Road and the further south we go. Uh, and, and it's especially troubling to me in that there is another option. If there was no other option, and you know what's coming, right? The auto park at South Point. There should be, there's enough room there, and I, and I would like for you to tell me or explain to me why something there wouldn't work as well as this. Uh, a lot of planning has gone into this whole area, including the city and county of Durham and consultants. Uh, but, well, the two points I wanted to make is, uh, the environmental impact of this and all the other things that have been mentioned, uh, the historic preservation of this church, which is near and dear to me, and the water issues for the residents. There has to be another way to do this. Y'all been living there for, well, I don't, know how, I don't know how long you've been living there, but this issue has been going on for decades. Something needs to be done, but you don't have to have a big, oh well, a car dealership to get that done. And again, I'm not against car dealerships. I just think this would be better serve Durham up closer to South Point. Uh, thank you. Thank you, sir. We don't have anyone else uh, wishing to speak. And I would say one thing. Um, I want to thank the residents for coming out. We enjoy cases where residents and communities show their support or opposition to cases. We know it took time out of your schedule, so we want to thank you for coming. But if we don't have any other commissioners wishing to speak, I'll ask for someone to make a motion. I'd like to make I'm a motion. Sorry. Oh. Reverend Whitley, you, you had a question, Reverend Whitley? I would like to make a motion that we uh, approve case a one two zero 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 one four. All right, it's been moved and properly second. All those in favor, let it be known by raising your right hand. Yeah. All right. You got it, Scott? Got it. Oh, okay, good. All right. Hit. Any opposed? get any opposed let let it be known by raising your right hand motion carries 11 to no, 10 to 2. Okay. can we get a motion on the zoning case i move approval of zoning case z one two zero 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 two five second all right it's been moved and properly second all those in favor let it be known by raising your right hand Any opposition, let it be known by raising your right hand. Motion carries 10 to 2. All right. Thank you. Whoop. All right. Thank you. Okay. So, all right, we'll move down to agenda item 6A, open the public hearing for green edge self-storage case Z13. Zero, 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 0005. Yes. Good evening, Amy Wolf with the planning department. Okay, but before you start, Ms. Wolf, give them a good few seconds to kind of clear out.
Okay, we'll give them a few more seconds to clear out. Okay. You you can proceed. I think once they close that door, it'll be okay. Thank you. Amy Wolf with the planning department. Uh, this case is zoning map change request. Case Z130005 for Green Edge Self Storage. The applicant is Culture Jewel Thames. This case is within the county's jurisdiction and the request is from residential suburban 20 to commercial general with a development plan. The Mr. Site Chairman. Is. Excuse me. I want to shut the door. Okay. You good? Okay. You good? Yes, okay. If you can, if you can just press rewind. Okay. It just, you started a couple times. Again, Amy Wolf with the planning department. This Thank is the case uh, Z130005 for Green Edge Self Storage. The applicant is Coulter Jewel Thames. The jurisdiction is within the county, or the site is within the county's jurisdiction. The request is from Residential Suburban 20 to Commercial General with a development plan. The site is 3.7 acres, and the proposed use is for up to 350 self-storage units. Uh, the site is located at 3802 and 1009 Wren Road. Uh, it is two parcels, again, with frontage on Andrew Avenue and Wren Road. It also has uh, frontage along a railroad right away along the south and western uh, uh, property line. Uh, Again, it's in this uh, county's jurisdiction, so uh, any zoning uh, approval is for a project that would not require connection to city services. The request does meet the requirements for the commercial general district and is demonstrated on the development plan. Uh, there is a reduction of side yard because it is adjacent to a railroad right of way. The existing conditions of the site show it, that it is largely tree covered. There are some specimen trees included. There is a structure on the site, a, a single family structure. And there are no other environmental features on the site. The proposal shows one access point off of Wren Road. It does show the appropriate building and parking envelope as well as tree preservation areas. Uh, shaded here along the northern and eastern property lines and it commits to a self-storage use and it says here all other uses are prohibited with a maximum of 50,000 square feet and I'll detail some other commitments as well again maximum of 50,000 square feet of building area there's the one access point which is on Wren Road the impervious, impervious surface maximum is 70% uh, this site is not within a watershed protection overlay, which would otherwise be allowed to do 100%. They're committing to 70%. The tree preservation is 10% commitment. Other graphic commitments are the uh, location of the access point and tree preservation areas. The committed use is a self-storage as well as 10 feet of right-of-way dedication along both Anger Avenue and Wren Road. There are a number of... Um, there are design commitments for uh, both buildings and roof line, uh, which includes building materials. They're summarized here on this uh, slide that's also in your staff report and on the development plan. The request is consistent with the future land use map of our comprehensive plan, which shows this area as commercial. And this request is consistent with uh, the other applicable policies of our comprehensive plan. And staff determines that this request is consistent with the plan and, and other applicable policies and ordinances.
Thank you, ma'am. We have one person signed up to speak. So if you state your name. Thank you. Patrick Biker. Should only need about three minutes of your time, Chairman Jones. All right. Good evening, Chairman Jones, members of the Planning Commission. My name is Patrick Biker. I live at 2614 Stewart Drive. I'm an attorney with Morningstar Law Group here in Durham. I'm here tonight representing Brad and Cliff Minsley, who are local Durham-based developers. We are requesting this zoning map change to allow self-storage development at the corner of Andrew Avenue and Wren Road in eastern Durham County. Also with us tonight are the project's landscape architect, Dan Jewell, the president of Coulter Jewell Thames, and the longtime owner of this property, Mrs. Harriet Brinkley. You've just heard the planning staff recommend approval and compliance with all applicable plans and ordinances, so I will try not to repeat their comments. We think there are three key reasons to support this zoning map change. The first reason is to stimulate significant tax base increase from the current tax value of the 3.7 acres located at the current, I'm sorry, at the corner of Ranger Avenue and Wren Road. At the present time, the Durham County assessed tax value for these 3.7 vacant acres is just over $51,000. The Green Edge self-storage development upon completion will yield a tax value of approximately $1 million, which represents about a 20-fold increase on property taxes generated from this 3.7 acres. Also, in addition to increased property tax revenues, it's important to recognize that the tax revenues from this development also will benefit the Bethesda Volunteer Fire Department, which provides fire protection for both city and county residents in this part of Durham. So approval of this zoning map change creates financial benefits for the county as a whole and also for the volunteer fire department which serves eastern Durham County. The second reason for approving this zoning map change is a recognition that the existing zoning residential suburban with 20,000 square foot lots makes no sense at all right next to an active railroad corridor. This active rail corridor is 150 feet wide and it has freight rail service running on it today. Furthermore, this rail corridor may have regional rail transit or high speed and or high speed passenger rail service in the future. I doubt anybody in this room would want to live in the type of residential development that would occur under the existing zoning for this property. Third and last, the property is designated as commercial on the future land use map. And this rezoning creates, invest creates needed investment for this section of Durham County. Personally, I was surprised at the number of boarded up houses I saw in the vicinity of this project. The rezoning before you tonight allows for much needed investment to occur and without any negative impacts on city or county services as is well documented in your staff report. So for all these reasons, we respectfully ask for your approval. Our team will be happy to try to answer any questions. Thank you. If we don't have anyone wishing to speak, I'll close the public hearing and bring it back before the commissioners. Reverend Whitley. Yes, I want to say um, the neighborhood is in favor, the community is in favor of the storage facility. Um, it would add something new to that area. And um, I, would, I would ask that you support this. Thank you. We have no one else wishing to speak. Can we get a motion? has been moved and properly second. All those in favor, let it be known by raising your right hand. Any opposition? Motion carries 12 to zero. Thank you. All right. Appreciate it. Thank you. We we'll move down to item 7A under new business, the briefing on the Rougemont Village Plan. Good evening, I'm Laura Woods with the Durham Planning Department, the project manager for the Village of Rougemont plan. And this is merely an interim report. I expect to be brief. I do want to begin with an emendation to your staff report. There is an error at the top of page two concerning locations of community meetings. And the church identified as incorrect, that should be New Red Mountain Missionary Baptist Church. We apologize for the mistake. Uh, because some of you are new to this uh, board and may not be familiar with this project and 
besides some of you may have kind of forgotten about it. Just a brief review. Um, this is based upon this policy of the comprehensive plan. The planning department shall develop land use plans and design guidelines to promote the continued and sustain sustainable economic viability as well as protect the character of the rural villages of Bahamian Rougemont. We elected to begin by planning for Rougemont. We held six community meetings and this is what we accomplished in those meetings. We explained the project and the planning process. We determined the issues that were of concern to residents. We conducted visioning exercises and explained a whole host of options available to residents and got their opinions on whether the, these various options were something they'd be interested in or not. In many cases, they were not. And uh, we developed a set of recommendations based upon what residents told us, presented those recommendations to determine their level of support, and we determined that they were very supported by the community. We opted in the end not to write a full-scale plan that was not warranted. We developed some recommendations. The first is a plan amendment for the area. This is the adopted future land use for Rougemont. And in large measure, the future land use was not considered closely when we developed the comprehensive plan in 2005. So this land use is really based upon the zoning and much of the zoning literally goes back to the 1950s. So the conditions or assumptions pertaining may not be valid. Working with the community, we suggested that moving that commercial to a village center, which would be largely commercial, would be warranted and this would be in the vicinity of Red Mountain Road at 501 Pool Road and Bacon Road. The acreages, by the way, for commercial don't change very much. It's simply moving them. We suggest to text amendments and they have to do with watershed protection. This is in Lake Mickey, Little River, Reservoir B. It's in the rural tier. Currently, res uh, parcels are limited to 6% impervious surface. And that's a pretty severe limit even on residential users. We suggest that within the village of Richmond, which is approximately 1% of the total watershed, uh, the percentage, the impervious surface be allowed to go up to 24%. That would have two effects. It would possibly make the development of a small commercial node more viable. It would also allow the residential landowners in, in the area a bit more flexibility with their property in terms of adding an addition if they wish to their, to their home building a larger home possibly, uh, which in some cases may not be possible at this point with the 6% limit. The second part of the text amendment we suggest is has to do with minimum lot size. In that protected watershed, the minimum lot size is one dwelling unit per three acres. We suggest that within the village that be altered to one dwelling unit per one acre. Now, realistically, because of the soils, very few, um, very little of the land can actually meet that. But it does give some landowners that option. Of course, keep in mind that the overarching regulation here is still, and won't be altered by this text amendment, is the overarching regulation is your septic system regulations, which are state requirements. Now, there are next steps in this project. Uh, we went to the Board of Commissioners at their May and June work sessions to go over these proposals to see if they were okay before we proceeded to the rather tedious task of preparing these amendments. And in principle, they agree. So our next steps will be to draft the plan amendment and draft the UDO text amendment. The processes diverge somewhat. The simpler of the two is the plan amendment. 
That will proceed like all plan amendments under the same requirements of all the plan amendments you see before you. The text amendment for the UDO is a bit more complex because we're proposing to alter watershed regulations. We'll need to write the text amendment, show it to the Board of Commissioners, make sure they're okay, and get their approval to contact the state and request this change in watershed regulations, assuming the state says okay, then we can proceed to a public hearing before the Board of Commissioners. Well, obviously we'll be at the Planning Commission first for a public hearing and then the Board of Commissioners. We hope to accomplish this over the next few months. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you. I think this is mainly for informational purposes, so it doesn't require a vote. Quite so right. We did have a, any, anyone else wishing to speak? Don't, go ahead, uh, Commissioner Harris. Uh, Mr. Wood, uh, this question actually go beyond the scope of what you were doing here. But as you hear tonight in the southern part of Durham, we have a serious problem with water quality. Mm -hmm. In the northern part of Durham, we also have a problem with northern quality that go beyond the scope of your village. Uh, and the question is, in your invest, I know one of the issues that the residents had was water and the, the quality of the water. My question is, in your investigation, did you guys come up with some kind of solution or how we can address the problem with the quality of the water? Uh, yeah, there are three large contamination plumes in the groundwater in Richmond. There is a separate project being um, handled, taken care of by the county to provide a community well system. That is not associated with this project, but this is kind of being timed to coincide so that they come before various things like contracts and so forth, come before the Board of Commissioners all in one fell swoop. And that's more convenient for residents and it's easier for the commissioners to keep track. So yes, that issue is being addressed by the county, but not by this, pl this plan. Okay, but you are doing it just for the village. Correct. I was talking about beyond the scope of the village. Are we other than yes. filters? Uh, you're asking a question that is well beyond my pay grade. Um, this <laughs> uh, this project was assigned to me, and this is my project. Okay. The well system is another project, and that's been assigned to someone else. And you're asking a third question, and I do not know the answer. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Kimball. Ms. Woods, how are you doing? Very well. Um, it's in line with what Commissioner Harris was talking about because of the fact uh, we know that right along North Roxborough Road has been this contamination bloom uh, from the gas stations that were there mm -hmm. and had leakage. Um, when you look at the Village of Rougemont proposed plan, are you looking at that community, you know, where the community well would actually supply water to? Would it be within the boundaries of the village? Do you know? Is there? It would. I, okay. Yes, I have seen a sort of draft for the areas served. It corresponds roughly to the village core in the future land use map that I showed you before. It's a bit larger, but it sort of in the same general area the same and, the, and incidentally the core there is actually where the largest contamination plume is at correct now the second question i have is these two isolated commercial pods yes that sit off of the core one further down roxborough road and one further out red mountain can you give us an explanation of why yes, this is yes, disjuncted? That's, that's a question I've filled it a few times. Those are existing commercial uses. One is, is a gas station sitting on top of one of the plumes, by the way. The other is a large animal veterinarian's office, and we expect that to stay, so therefore we simply left it as commercial. Then is there a reason why we didn't have some type of mixed zone use between the 
to kind of pull it all together? Mm -hmm. Because otherwise you're looking at encroachment either way in growth. Um, th as I say, these are existing uses. They're unlikely to go away. They're unlikely to propose to enlarge or expand. There was no expressed community support for the kind of link you're talking about. Therefore, we opted for the more conservative approach. Was there even a discussion amongst the residents about how that shape in a future land use mm -hmm. actually gets affected through sale of property and further on? Uh, very little was discussed at the meetings. The few questions I had were much like yours, what are those? And uh, once I responded, then that was the end of the conversation. There were no further, no one asked about implications. Okay, thank you. Sir. Any other questions? No. Thank you, Ms. Woods. Mm -hmm. And we'll move down to um, 7B, committee assignments or committee appointments. We have two open committee appointments. One was the Development Review Board, and the other one was the Bike and Ped Commission. Um, Mr. Whitley has asked to serve on a um, Development Review Board. We'll grant that request. And the Bike and Ped, we're still um, contemplating. So if anyone has a burning desire to serve on the bike and ped, uh, you can speak now, we can work something out. Or if not, we'll uh, perhaps hold this off until the next month if we could. No burning desires, okay. So, um, Mr. Young, is that okay for us to hold the bike and ped off till next month? Yes, sir, it'll just remain vacant until filled. Okay, well, good enough. Yes, so the existing committee assignments will stay the same until otherwise noted. So any other, so we move down to 7C, which is any announcements, any announcements from anyone? What do we have next month? Mr. Chair, we have three, three cases on your agenda next month. And also I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce our newest staff member who's, who's sitting to my left is Julia Black. She's one of our new executive assistants. And one of her many, many tasks will be the official clerk to the Planning Commission. So oh. the first time since 2009, you guys will have a real clerk, not me. <laughs> no. <laughs> we still like you, Scott. That's pretty cool. Yes, yeah, so we want to thank you. So I'm assuming next month she'll be ready to go, like, full. Yes? Yeah, she'll be the one calling your names and counting your hands. <laughs> okay, well, thank you. So if all uh, hearts and minds are clear and no one else has any other announcements, we'll go ahead and adjourn. Yeah.